Hello and welcome to Charter Talk 4630. I'm Stacy, and joining me today is my co-host and friend, Kyle D. We thank you for joining us today. And if this is your first time here, we're happy you joined us. And I'll be even happy if you decide to join our community by subscribing to this podcast. We appreciate those that have already subscribed. You're the best because you continue to help us grow. And also you'll be notified whenever we go live or release the latest content. And you can hear us wherever you get your podcast. And last, please go to your browser and check out more Chargers content from some great writers, along with myself and my co-host, Kyle D., who operates and created StormCloud.blog. Good morning, Kyle. On this Friday morning, it's kind of windy here on the East Coast, some rain coming. But how is it out there in California? Mm, it's getting nice and chilly, man. The, the yeah. season has turned. We're going to pull back the clocks this week, get an extra hour of That's rest. Right. Enjoy right. that. It's an extra hour of podcasting, Stacey, if we stay on it. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's great, man. I love the turning of the seasons. Love it getting a little colder. So um, I, I welcome it. Feels like football weather now as opposed yes. to just the summer hangover. Yeah, the fall weather is kicking in, man. So you want to just get right on into it, man? Let's do it. Okay, like... The marriage, I think, between um, the Browns and Deshaun Watson is probably coming to a divorce next year because Flacco's no longer in the building. Um, Deshaun, you know, it's unfortunate with that injury that he's had. And he really haven't done anything since he's been in Cleveland. So uh, the fans are feeling some kind of way that he's still on record as the only quarterback in history to get a fully guaranteed contract and he haven't did anything to live up to that. So they're feeling some kind of way about that. But Joe Flacco is not there no more. He's doing what he could do to try to get the Colts back on track. But Jameis Winston came off the bench and led Cleveland to an impressive victory over the Baltimore Ravens last week. He's been a starter and a little better than the average quarterback in this league. But Kyle, the Ravens allow Winston to get comfortable in the pocket with very little pressure. He's got a strong arm and you can see he's still more than capable of making plays anywhere on the field. What do the Chargers need to do this weekend to slow that offense down? Because they do have weapons and they can beat you downfield. Oh, yeah. You got to – everything begins and ends with getting pressure on Jameis. Yes. Uh, Nick Chubb still hasn't quite shown his pre-injury, you know, burst and uh, in power. So – you never know if a guy like Chubb is, you know, coming off of an injury is going to find it again. And you're the team he finds it with. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. The, the hope is that, you know, we don't see old Chubb come into play, but right. you you never know. And, uh, but the biggest priority definitely is to get to Jameis. He's yes. a guy that can deliver from the pocket. He's got a rocket of an arm, yes. but he's not known for his decision-making. He's not known for his composure. So the more we rush him, the better. Uh, mm -hmm. The more unique stuff Minter throws at him, mm -hmm. uh, pre and post snap, um, maybe some blitzes from the slot, get un unleash Derwin a little bit, and yeah. you're going to see Jameis make some very questionable decisions. Um, have you had a chance to see their their young gun coming out now, uh, Cedric Tillman? I forget if he's a first uh, yeah. or second year player. He's I, I seen him, man. He looked like a football player. He looked yeah. like he he's, can be a good receiver. I mean. He got deep a couple of times. He appeared to have good hands. So uh, when called upon, he's come through. So that's something that we have to look out for. But I'm confident early in the year when Asante Samuel went down and Christian Fulton went down, I was kind of nervous a little bit. I'm like, wow, here we go with the injuries again. But, man, Tahib Steele and Cam Hart, man, they are a lot better than I thought they were. I mean, they picked up on things a lot faster than I anticipated. So, That's uh, one heck of a fifth round, man. Yes. That is a fifth round to be remembered. That is yes. incredible. And Sante came in. He were making plays. He'd never been a great tackler. But he was always a good cover guy, played with a lot of energy. But Cam Hart bring that oomph. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When Cam Hart get there, he want you to know that he tries to always separate the body from the ball. And I love players like that. So um, I'm happy with them. I'm, I'm confident in those guys. I'm confident in Jesse Minter. So um, I know it's going to be a tough task, but if we are who we think we are, I think we should win. And there's a lot of people that were talking to me on X that were saying, you guys got to relax a little bit because we're rebuilding and you're going to go through this and go through that. And you know why? You know, I had went up and down about it, Kyle. I refuse just to believe that. You know why? Because I'm saying... I've been watching football long enough for 47 years. I know what it looks like when you're rebuilding a team. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about Hall of Famer uh, Khalil Mack. 
you talk about Joey Bosa. Look, I know about his injury history in the whole nine, but when he is able to be on the field, he's a difference maker. You're talking about Derwin James, the highest paid safety in the league. You know, you you got J.K. Dobbins, who's a good back. As long as he stay healthy, he's a good back. You're talking about one of the best generational quarterbacks in the National Football League in Justin Herbert. I don't want to hear that it's rebuilding because if you're rebuilding, you get rid of those pieces. You get rid of the Khalil Max and all those guys and start bringing in young pieces. For you to keep them, I don't believe it's rebuilding. I think we have a window that's open to get in the playoffs, and I'm not giving up until we don't have a shot anymore. I'm going to make this comparison, but I'm not saying we're going 13 and three because we're not going 13. Well, I'm not saying that either now. I'm not but, getting crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I'm going to make this comparison. Okay. Um, and it's, you know, you look at what Jim Harbaugh had in the, with the 49ers. Right. And mm-hmm. when, when we were getting excited, Stacy, or in the off season, everyone was telling us, well, you know, Jim walked into a much better situation in San Francisco. He had so yeah. much more talent. Yes. Do you think the year before he got there, that's how anyone felt? No. no. We just look back on it with rose-colored glasses because now we look at them on Pro Football Reference and we see what their roster was in his first year. Yes. And now all the players have little annotations. They've got, oh, this guy went to the Hall of Fame. This guy became an All-Pro. This guy was a Pro Bowler. Only a couple of them were on their way to getting accolades at that point in time. But Jim came in the building and turned that team around and put them on a trajectory that turned many of their careers around, uh, got the most out of all of them. In 10 years, when you look for 15 years, when you look back on the 2024 Los Angeles Chargers, you're going to see a lot of players with little accolades that they don't have right now. There's going to be a couple guys that might say it'll be maybe a little bit longer than that before you see the uh, HOFs Mm -hmm. uh, show up for guys that could be on that track, like Rashawn Slater or Joe Alt. They have the potential. Nowhere near the accolades at this point. We certainly hope that Herbert's on that way as well. Um, So there's, it's hilarious to me to hear people say, well, that team was a lot more talented. Not, not, no, they weren't. They no. had they had talent in the building, but they had a coach that brought it out of them. And this team is very much the same way. They have a coach that's bringing out the best in them and is turning things around. We're only at the beginning stages of that. It's yes. going to get better from here. Yeah. But don't don't discount our boys. We got we we do have something cooking right now. I do, I do, I do believe that too, man. And um, I think um, we was expecting. Um, we want to see that success like right away. And it took a little time. I mean, this is, what is this, his fourth new offense that he's been since he's been there, uh, Justin Herbert. So it took a little time, you you know, you're trying to decide how we're going to do this. Are we going to be a heavy run? Or, and we were in the beginning, heavy run. But a lot of that had to do with Justin Herbert dealing with injuries. He came into the season with plantar fasciitis. You know, he had a a thumb injury. He was dealing with a high ankle sprain. And that's the reason why you didn't see him breaking off runs when the pocket collapsed. He was a target. If the pocket collapsed, he was just getting sacked because he wasn't able to move around the pocket due to his injuries. You can look over the last two weeks and clearly see he's much, much more healthier now. And um, I just believe that we still have a shot to get mm-hmm. one of those wild card spots. And until or if they get eliminated, I'm going to continue, despite of what people say, I'm going to continue to believe they four and three. They're looking better the last couple of weeks. Look like they figuring things out now. So let's see how they look against Cleveland. And if they can come out of Cleveland with a win and do it convincingly, that's going to shoot my expectations up even more. Yeah, yeah. And, and a big part of that, Stacey, I think, is we got to make sure with this team that in this year mm-hmm. uh, that we don't drop the games we should mm-hmm. win. Mm-hmm. We already did it with the Cardinals. You can't afford to keep doing it. That's this right. is one of those games on the schedule that you need to win because if you don't, then you need to find a game that you can steal. You know, you got to yeah. find something like, yeah. you know, taking down the Chiefs, which they can do, but it just lowers the probability of us making it to the playoffs substantially. So yes. in a game like this, you have to show up. Pass rush has to get home. And then the interesting thing for me, Stacy, that I know you're going to be looking for as well is 
how do we respond this week to a team that also has a formidable pass rush in Miles Garrett? Absolutely. Somebody somebody that can also disrupt the run. But uh-huh. is this where we see the marriage between passing game and running game? So far, mm-hmm. it's been one of them really leading the way right. and the other one falling by the wayside. We haven't mm-hmm. seen a really strong balanced attack yet from this offense. Yeah. One goes to sleep and one wakes up. <laughs> so yeah. is this the week that we see a little bit of punch counter punch? Like and put it all together and yeah. be more, more balanced is what you're talking about. And yeah, Kyle, in order to get there, like you mentioned before about being able to beat the teams that you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And when you look at a couple of the wins they had, you, you get a win, then you'll get like a loss in order to get there. You got to be, you got to start stacking a couple of wins. All right. Mm-hmm. You have a loss. You lost. You threw that one to Arizona. You got this win this past weekend. Start stacking. Like before you lose another game, how about win two more in a row? Mm-hmm. When you have three in a row before you lose, that's how you start stacking those wins up. I think if you could win two, three games in a row, we're rolling then. Because when you play the good teams, some of them you, 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 know, you may beat some, some you may lose, but the teams you are supposed to beat, you should do it. But look, the Chargers has proven all season they've been consistently applying pressure on the quarterback. I mean, all season. I think it's important to stop the run early, which would at least keep Winston from using play action to throw downfield. You know, he loves to do that, and he has weapons on the outside that could do that. But I noticed in the past games, when he did get in trouble throwing the ball downfield, is when defenses played those two high safety. Kyle, I don't know how the Chargers defense will attack Winston, But if they do deploy that scheme with the two high safeties, I'm sure Winston will put some balls in harm's way if he starts feeling too confident. Baltimore dropped at least three interceptions last Sunday. And had they caught them, the outcome could have been different. Absolutely. And Chargers fell victim to that last week too, right? I mean, not that we were dropping interceptions, but we had penalties call back too. Uh, Molden's sitting there like, man, guys, I'm in a contract year. Y'all messing with my, with my payday right now. You're messing with my negotiations. I need those stats. Come on. Uh, So it's a bummer to see for him, but uh, he's been lights out for us all year. So I got nothing but great things to say about that guy. Uh, But yeah, staying disciplined. Um, The good thing is, we were struggling with Kyler Murray, right? With him mm-hmm. escaping the pocket. Uh, we don't have that same concerns with Jameis. You know, the pass rush right. doesn't have to be as disciplined. Still want right. them to be disciplined. But yes, yes. Um, you you get there with Jameis and force him to start scrambling, and you've already kind of done your job. Right. Uh, you're not going to see him scramble by some time and make a, a, an elite throw down the field or scramble on you and, and punish you. Right. So that's kind of what I see as a, as a good sign. It'd be great based on that, if some of our younger guys Mm -hmm. got a little bit of action as well, if we see a little Thule showing up, padding his stats, uh, with, you know, Max sending, uh, forcing Jameis over his way, um, or some linebacker action. Like, or like I said, get a little creative, throw some different looks, show one thing pre-snap, then send in the slot, uh, on a blitz. You know, I, I, it's going to be up to, um, mentor to dial up a little bit of creativity, uh, to keep him on his toes. Yeah, um, I'm looking at the schedule, man, and you got Browns, Titans, and Bengals. And the Bengals, I know they have Joe Burrow and all, but they're struggling. But to me, if we are going to be that team that can get a wild card spot, those are three games we got to win. And that'll be a four-game winning streak because when you go into Baltimore, we know how great of a team Baltimore Ravens is. But what people haven't been saying that looks kind of strange, Baltimore have been giving up a lot of, I don't know what's going on. I haven't paid attention. I haven't talked to my partner who's a Ravens fan. But I'm not used to seeing that defense just give up 30-something points every game. But Mm -hmm. every offense, whether they win or lose, they have in their way with that defense. I don't know if they deal with injuries or whatever, but if we could get on a roll with these games that we should and we get this offense, like you were saying, a lot more balanced, than Mm -hmm. what it is, we could give the Ravens some problems because they are close to the bottom in the league with stats because I'm looking every week. And if they win, it's 41-38. Or, you know, Mm -hmm. Cleveland put up 30-something points. And it's like, wow, man, what's what's wrong with the Ravens? I'm not used to seeing their defense give up points like that. I know. New new defensive coordinator in there. Maybe that has something to do with the communication breaking down or maybe play calling's a little funky. I haven't been watching them enough to know either, Stacey, but, but they've, um, they've been a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde, haven't they? Like they've, you know, that they're a good team. You know, that they have the talent. They're well managed, but 
when you were talking about the Browns uh, taking them down this last weekend, I was sitting there like, wait a minute, like that's happened before this year. The Raiders yeah. also upset them. So they've, they've dropped some very, yeah. Yeah. you would think winnable games. Right. And that's what the Chargers can't do here. When right. you're looking ahead at the schedule and you're saying, well, we've got the Bengals coming up and we've got the Ravens coming up. Right. Well, even though I would love to beat the Bengals, Joe Burrow's playing very well again. They've got two premier receivers. That's a that's a good offense. That's a yeah. good team. Yes. So it's not a team you want to look past. You want to roll into that game with a, like three games above 500 by taking yeah. down a beatable Cleveland Browns team with a backup quarterback play. Yes. Sure. Hey, James. you guys still here. I hope you're all doing well. I would like to express our gratitude for your continued support of our podcast. Cal and I are dedicated to providing you with the latest updates on Chargers content, and we appreciate your time in listening to us. Our podcast is available for listening on various platforms, allowing you to stay informed while commuting or engaging in other activities. Additionally, Cal and I contribute articles to stormcloud.blog where you can discover a diverse range of Chargers enthusiasts. We are committed to reaching our goal of 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And we encourage you to share our podcast with your friends and your colleagues who may be interested in Chargers content. Kyle and I are passionate about providing valuable insights and analysis for Charger fans. And as a retired individual, this endeavor keeps me engaged and mentally stimulated. Thank you once again for your support. We look forward to continuing to deliver exceptional content to you. And now back to the podcast. Yes. Sure. Jameis has the talent. He was a number one pick. He puts up a lot of fantasy points because he, he hurls does. that ball, gets yep. touchdowns, but he throws into mistakes. You can take advantage of that. You should beat him. Yeah. Um, if they if they come up and show do what they're gonna do. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, Titans, that's another one we should win. So you want to stack those wins, just like you were saying, Stacey, so yes. that when you have those challenging stretches, yes, you drop a game or two, all of a sudden, hey, we're still yes. what would that be then? Five and four? Yeah, we're okay. But right. you get behind the eight ball here. It's like when we're watching baseball, Stacey, and you know. You th your uh, the bases are loaded and you throw a ball at that first pitch and, you're like, and they know you can't we can't walk him because he's going to score. Right. You can't get behind the pitch count. Right. So we right. don't want to get behind the pitch count here. We need to stay aggressive. We need to keep winning. We need to stack those wins. Yes, absolutely, hundred percent. Look, Jameis Winston is a guy that has a strong belief in God, and just like some of us lean on religion to help us get through tough times, Winston's faith and belief that God will have him to prevail most of the time when dealing with adversity, he takes that same mindset onto the football field. He's always, like, engaged and motivating the players on the sideline, whether he was the starter or the backup. He's a guy that's full of energy, and at times he do play at a high level. So it's important for Jesse Minter to come up with a game plan to show him different looks, get a lot of pressure, and stop their run, which they, we know that they love to use the run to set up their passing game. And you know what would be if when you were when you first saying that, actually, Stacey, I was like, I was about to laugh because I was like, is he about to say that Jameis Winston sometimes just closes his eyes and puts out a prayer and throws the ball out there? <laughs> I'm putting my faith in you, God. <laughs> just let well, it go. He will throw him up there now. Whenever <laughs> yeah. you got a gunslinger that likes to just put it in the air all the time, you know, he does. He will throw picks. So uh, I'm where hoping do you think our they, guys are back there. Got some good hands. Uh, where, do you, where, where do you think they came up with the phrase Hail Mary from, man? Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, but so that was just that just had me funny, man. I got yeah. my head set for a second there. Well, you but, know, when you listen to him talk, he's he, he seems like he a very religious guy and you know, even after his press conference in games, he's always thanking God for this thing. So I know that that plays an important role. He used that yeah. to uh, motivate him to play and things like that. And we just got to be ready for him, man, because we know I think we have a good secondary. We have a good defense. Uh, we only giving up, I think, 12 or 13 points a game. And if he's going to keep throwing it up like that, he's going to give us a couple. Yeah, 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 you know. and he, and, he, and he'll get a couple too. He's a talent. He's got yes. the arm talent. He so do. he's one of those guys you can't sleep on. Yes. But but you should be able to take advantage of. Right. And uh, my goal this week, Stacy, for this team, for the Chargers, would be mm -hmm. you can't just win and give them some hope. If we really want to do well, because there's a little plan here in place in my yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah. Do well enough. To then be able to on Monday wake up and go, hey, or even Sunday after the game, uh -huh. be like, this might not be it. 
you guys want to kick it to next year? Maybe we send you a fourth. Maybe you send us David and Joku. Like, put to bed their season hopes so that you can open up some trade negotiations because we need something, man. We need one of those. We need a David and Joku. We need something to help get this team over the edge. So, what would you think about you, that, Stacey? I mean, if we lose, I don't think it'll happen. If you lose, then it's almost like, okay, we're not going anywhere. Let's stand with what we got and we'll work on doing what we got to do next year. But the more you keep winning, you know, it puts a little bit more pressure that, Hey man, you do have a window here. You can't waste it. Go do something, mm-hmm. you know? So um, I, I'm really starting to think that because it's been so quiet, probably nothing's going to happen. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe Harbaugh and, uh, and Hortiz have decided, Hey, look, we're going to stick with the guys we got. And mm-hmm. we'll worry about rounding out this roster next year because we still haven't seen DJ Chalk yet. I'm sure they would love to see him hit the field and see what it looks like with mm-hmm. him on the field. I would love to go get a trade. I think that would be the best thing to do. But I just don't see like everybody been making moves over the last couple of weeks and we have been quiet. I'm kind of shocked by that because I thought Hortiz was one of those guys that stay busy trying to improve this team every opportunity that he could. So I'm kind of surprised by it, but hey, I'm going to ride with whoever they put out there, you know? Yeah, yeah. and let's dispel one rumor right now. Uh, there's been talk about Joshua Palmer being on the trade block. Yeah. I, I can't see that happening no. at all, unless it aligns with them bringing somebody in. Right. Then, but then did they, you hear that from a credible source, or that's just... It just was, it was floating all over Twitter a couple yeah. days ago that there was a that there was a rumor that the Chargers had no plans on extending Joshua Palmer and that that was going to prompt potential trade talks. Mm. But again, guys, the way that somebody like Joe Ortiz works is he's looking at Josh as being a guy that could go and get him compensatory picks next year. So right away, if he has Joshua as a guy that will make enough money on the open market, which he hasn't yet. Uh, he mm. hasn't performed to the level that he's going to get a big payday, but he, he's he been playing through injury. Herbert hasn't been putting up stats because he's been playing through injury. I think Joe still expects him to elevate his game and stats and go mm-hmm. and get paid at the end of the year. Um, he probably has him somewhere between, oh, this guy should fetch me a fifth or a sixth round compensatory pick. So right. why would he let somebody take – um Palmer for what send us a sixth or a seventh I just yeah. don't see it I don't yeah, see yeah. It seeing his having him having more value right now but I think the chemistry he has with Herbert and letting him try to rebuild his market value in the second mm-hmm. half of this year mm-hmm. makes a lot more sense um yeah unless we bring in somebody that can move the needle because even though he hasn't been as productive when he has been thrown to He's made some really clutch catches. Well, that's what I was about to say that, you know, he's kind of raised his stock up a little bit the last couple mm-hmm. of weeks because he has made some unbelievable catches, some toe taps out of bounds that I haven't seen him do in the four years he was here. Mm-hmm. So um, he must be hearing the outside noise too because his level of play has stepped up the last couple of weeks. And that could also have the organization saying, hold on. Let's, mm-hmm. let's, hold, let's hold fast on talk about moving him because he looking better and better every week. And we don't want to trade a piece for a receiver we looking for. We might have him here right now. So I like Palmer. I really do. Maybe because um, we look like we're in that window right now, at least, of getting a wild card spot. I want to go for it. I look, I, you know, even if I'm not talking about Super Bowl, I just want to be in a tournament, though. You know, mm-hmm. like you want to win the Powerball. Everybody want to get rich. I want to win the mega million. But if you don't go buy a ticket, you have no shot. <laughs> so I'm saying if you could get in the tournament, who's to say that they can't go on a run? Yeah. And get yeah. deep in a play. Who's to say you don't know? Because what you've done the regular season, it doesn't matter anymore. We've had wild card teams go in and go to the Super Bowl and win. We've seen that before. I'm keeping hope alive. I'm not giving up on any opportunity mm-hmm. until there's no more options. Absolutely. And the only thing that needs to happen in the playoffs for this team is for a team to try to shut us down with our run game and for Herbert to elevate his game and the play of everyone around him. It's right. not like this team can't perform right. in, De- in December or January football. Right. It's right. actually built for it. Yeah, it's, it's whether or not we can get there 
uh, through the war of attrition that is football, everyone's staying healthy. And if Herbert continues to make the strides that he made the last two weeks, um, you saw it start to happen in Arizona. He was putting up the yards, but they could not punch the ball in the end zone. And they made some stupid mistakes uh, against a team that just tried to shut down the run, the running game altogether. And last week, the um, Saints tried to do something similar, really focused on shutting down our run, our running game, mm-hmm. and it opened up the passing offense, and we actually were able to start capitalizing on it. So now teams are probably going to be approaching us from a much more balanced perspective, I would think. We'll see. Right. But when that happens, can JK capitalize on it? Can we yeah. get some push from our offensive line? Are we going to mix up a little more outside running and really using those tackles as a as you know a strong post that we can rely on to really be a pivot point for um, runoff gap on? So we'll right. see. Yes. Well, um, I got two more things I want to um... – I want to talk about I I'm keeping my eye on Joe all mm-hmm. because he shut down Max Crosby. He matched up great with TJ Watt. He only gave up that one sack before going out with a knee injury in that game against Pittsburgh. And now he gets to go up against another beast in miles Garrett. The good thing about this that I love, we can clearly see the last two weeks that Justin Herbert is healthy now. And mm-hmm. when you have a healthy Justin Herbert, you could beat anybody in this league because he's just that good. You can see how he looks more confident. He yelling at the players if they're not lined up in the right spot. He's celebrating touchdown throws. And when the pocket collapses, he does his best version of Lamar Jackson and looks good doing it. So, Kyle, I'm always confident knowing we have a healthy number 10 behind center. Yeah, and, you know, we've seen some a, a little more success with play action early. Um, some naked rollouts where, you know, you see – Justin, play action and then roll out. And you're like, man, he's got some time. Yes. Wow. It, it does work, guys. We can do this. And that's where yeah. we, how we should be using him. He's got the speed to beat you if you do not bring it with your pass rush or, right. or spy him or something. So yes. that's how you start scheming your receivers open downfield and giving them opportunities. Make that defense think about those things and stay honest. Right. Um, I remember – they had him matched up against Jamari Sawyer a couple years ago in Sawyer's first ever start in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And if I, I think that was his first start. It was either his yeah. first or his second. I don't I think, think he gave up any sacks either. Uh, no pressures either. I don't I yeah. think he shut him out that game. Yes, yes, he did. Um now I think that's when we had Lindsley and Herbert had a pocket to step into. Yeah. Every sna- almost every snap, Sawyer was just sending him a, uh, you know, around the edge and yes. letting Herbert step into the pocket. And right. that's what we were talking about, I think, last week when we said, you know, it's great to have these elite bookends when this team is going to take the next step is when we solidify the uh, interior offensive line and give Herbert a pocket to step into. There's some phantom pressures that mm-hmm. get attributed to your tackles mm-hmm. that really don't deserve it when Herbert doesn't have a pocket to step up into because the tackles are trying to push him to the outside. And if he's stepping too far back, he doesn't have anywhere to go. And right. you, you, you feed Herbert right into their laps. Yes. So. I'm very curious to see, because I think Garrett, at least in that game, maybe it was because, and this shows you how how much I watch Cleveland Browns football. I hate to say it. I should be watching more. But that game, they lined Garrett up uh, across from Sawyer, which was on the left side of the line. So are they they putting him on the right side a lot this year, Stacey? I, I haven't seen. I don't know for sure. But I don't know if they'll move him around or if they will just let him play a certain position. What 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 do you see them doing? There? Yeah, I see them just letting him move around. Wherever he wherever he feel like coming, if he want to bring pressure up the middle or he want to line up against Slater, or he want to line up against all, you know, he's been he's been that good and a leader of that team that I think they'll allow him to freelance and come wherever he want to come. You see Max Crosby do that. He mm-hmm. he couldn't get nothing off on Slater and then he'll come over on all and he tried his best but all held his own, you know. Yeah. So um that's going to be a good matchup. I, I want to um, say uh, real quick and, and just apologize to viewers because I'm using a totally different program. And I don't know if they know this. I've been making changes as we've been going, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I looked up and people probably will see it. And if I don't say something about it, they'll come to the chat room and say it. I had on there Los Angeles Chargers versus Chicago Bears. And as we were talking, I'm looking like Chicago Bears. We don't play Chicago. Why? But I'm using a total different uh, software now 
Yeah, so I'm figuring things out. I'm typing. I'm typing your name <laughs> in. And we'll have it right next week. But I was figuring stuff out as we were on the fly just talking. So, um, you know. It, always it, always be learning, everybody. Always yes, be learning. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, um, yeah, so I like, um, I like this game. Um, something else that I want to end with. I seen Ian Rappaport put up a tweet. And it's funny, I just started laughing because we were talking about it on the last podcast. He said there's three to four teams that he's aware of that have been calling the Seattle Seahawks for DJ Metcalf. Now, he didn't mention who those teams were. You you dog, Stacey. If yeah. you get, if you get yeah. the long shot trade, <laughs> are you kidding me? Oh, when he heard, I was like, oh, my God, if, if we could pull that off, that would make me look so good. <laughs> Now, I don't know. He didn't mention the names, but he said four teams have been calling the Seattle Seahawks about finding out if you would be willing to part ways with him. Okay. He's, he may want to go. His contract is not guaranteed yeah. beyond this year. So they he want more guarantee. He want guaranteed money. And I don't know if Cleveland, if Seattle wants to do that. So, hey, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, man. Maybe, maybe luck may be on my side. You know, I just said that out of clear blue but now all of a sudden i'm wondering are we one of those four teams all right stacy here's what's gonna happen if that goes okay. down we're gonna okay. treat it like we're gonna treat it like a victory sunday then okay. we broke it right I'm, here i'm, I'm gonna go I'm, I'm gonna go get myself a cigar and, okay. and a, and a right. bottle That's of scotch right. and That's you right. and i will have you know, i'm Damn gonna join right. you for right one of those here. late night sessions all right yes. absolutely. <laughs> i like that i like that a lot but uh anything you want to um finish with uh, only two things, uh, for our, for our viewers, if you want to do some interesting reading, I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, but, uh, Stacy was pointing out that there might be a, a little bit of trouble in paradise between the Browns and Deshaun Watson. And there's a lot of interesting articles right now for you to do a little bit of research on. I'll try to drop it in the comments, but, um, like Stacy said, it's a fully guaranteed contract, but a new thing that's come out that's been very interesting to read about is, um, and it, I guess I shouldn't say new. It's been going on. It's been brought to the public's eye uh, a couple times in the last few years. But the thought, the idea of insuring your players, uh, Deshaun Watson's contract is insured by the Cleveland Browns. So mm -hmm. kind of a tricky thing, Stacey, is yeah. you can pay a couple million dollars to insure the contract of one of your players. The Chargers have done this with Justin Herbert. I forget if it's like $60 million of his contract or something like that is insured. Okay. Okay. And if the player is lost due to injury, you can actually, that insurance company will pay out mm -hmm. and the payout actually goes back into your salary cap, which okay. is kind of crazy. So the couple million that you spend to get the insurance doesn't count against your salary cap, mm -hmm. but what you get back from the company does. So next year is going to be really interesting to follow what happens with Deshaun Watson, because there's really no incentive for Cleveland to try to get him back early because they're going to make a prorated amount of money back from their insurance company for every game that Deshaun misses. I think a full $40 million is insured or somewhere around there okay. um, of his contract next year. So they are actually financially incentivized to not clear him to return to play. Wow. I'm sure that the insurance companies have their own professionals that will take a look and kind of appraise him and see if he's good to go. Um, so there might be a little dispute about that. So just yeah. look that up, guys. Keep that on your horizon. Secondly, on stormcloud.blog, uh, Ryan Watkins has posted some of his um, favorite trade targets for the Chargers as well. Uh, he's got a couple centers in there, a couple receivers, a couple tight ends. Um, uh, so definitely give that a look. Uh, it's at stormcloud.blog. Uh, sign up, make an account, chat with us. That We have a robust forum on there for viewers of this show and for chargers fans in general. So come and chat, uh, obviously chat in the YouTube comments as well, but we have other conversations happening over there. So come and join us. Absolutely. And it's, and it's free to register. doesn't cost yeah. you a penny. Exactly. Well, that'll do it for this episode. Thank you for joining us here on Chargers Talk 4630. Please don't forget to log on to stormcloud.blog if you're looking for more Chargers content. We'll be back on Monday morning, hopefully, with a happy recap from the Chargers. That is 
as they hit the dog pound in Cleveland, Ohio, to face the Browns in an important game that the Chargers got to have to stay in the playoff picture. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that now before you leave this podcast. And as always, be good, be safe, be well, be kind to each other, enjoy your weekend, and enjoy all the games as well, and bolt up. Cal, great show, man. Um, this was really good. I was really tired. I didn't know how I was going to feel, if I was going to be dragging, but... <laughs> You know, but I kicked it to you and, and, and you dragged me through the finish line. So I appreciate it. And I apologize to all the people for the technical difficulties. I'm using different programs. So you might have seen some things going across the ticker and said, why, why has he put that? And then now you, I corrected everything. So we'll be better at it like we always do. And we'll see you guys next week. Kyle, listen, man, have a great, 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 great day, man. I'm going to get me some rest and um, – and say hi to the little one for me. <laughs> you got it, Stacey. Say right. hi to your wife and family for me and have a great one, man. Absolutely. Did you take her to um to Halloween? To no, we uh we trick or we we didn't trick or treat. We just dressed up okay. and uh here at the house with the dogs. We were the greatest showman. She was the ringleader, and okay. uh I was the world's strongest man. Okay. <laughs> uh, my my wife was the trapeze artist. Uh oh, so wow. we and the dogs, we got the dogs involved. So we just had okay. fun at the house. Okay, but, all right. Sound like good stuff there. She, but she's 10 months old, Stacey. She saw herself in the mirror with the costume, and she immediately started giggling. So we were like, ah, oh, she gets it. It's so <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. She was fired up, so it's fun. All right, okay, <laughs> listen, I'll talk to you soon. Right on, Stacey. Have a great weekend, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you, thank you.